Hey everybody, Carl Shoup from Snorkel.tv here, and today we're going to make a sticky nav. What is a sticky nav? Well, it's a navigation that contains buttons that stick when you click on them. So we have our over states, we have our down states, if you will, but you'll notice that this button here stays orange until I click on another button. So what we're going to be doing is keeping track of which button has been clicked, and then when we select another button, we're going to tell that previously selected button to go back to its normal state. Um, and you'll see that once a button is selected, rolling over it doesn't change the color of it. Um, and all these other guys are going to work just fine. So that's what our finished product is going to be. And now we're going to move over to my start file. And we're just going to go over a little bit of the basic file setup. We've started out with a little bit of action script in here, like the basics, and we'll talk about those. And then we'll show you how to make your navigation bars remember which button is currently active. So on the stage here, we have this movie clip here called NavMC. Inside of it, we have a few of our buttons. They're all instances of the same symbol. They're named Nav1, Nav2, Nav3 and nav4. Okay. Now each individual button has two components right now. There's that dot. Okay. That movie clip there is what's going to be changing color. And inside every button it's called dot mc. Beneath it we have a hit area Okay, that we're going to be rolling over uh, that contains that white outline and that black piece in the middle. And this is a movie clip called BGMC for background MC. So every button contains a background movie clip and the dot movie clip. The dot is the thing that's going to be changing color. So let's go back to scene one and let's check out some of the existing actions that we have already. Um, perfect. Let's click right here. Thank you. And let me just pin this script so that it stays open. And here we go. So we're importing the green sock tweening classes. And we also have some stuff set up so that the nav itself um, has its button mode equals true, which means we'll get the pointing finger cursor. And we're also telling the entire nav to have mouse over, mouse out, and click events. So instead of assigning these event listeners to each individual button inside of the nav, the navigation as a whole is going to have those listeners assigned to it. And we've done this a few times before, especially in our current target versus target demonstration. And down here we have a <clears throat> variable set up to keep track of what the currently selected button is or nav item. And in nav over, nav out, and nav click, what we're doing is grabbing the mouse event that comes into these listeners and we're figuring out what the target object is. What is the object that is uh, sending the mouse over, the mouse out, and the click? So let me just show you how this works right now. There's a one little problem we're going to have to fix, okay? And notice that when I'm declaring nav item on the nav over function, that I'm also instantly tracing out the name of the nav item. And here you'll see that when I roll over, this clip right here, in the output, I'm getting BGMC. If I roll over the dot, I get dot MC. So for each one of those buttons inside of the movie clip, their interior movie clips, their backgrounds and dots, are actually firing off the mouse over events. Okay, that's the way mouse over works. Um, if you have subchildren inside of your object that has the event listeners registered, all of those children down the chain are going to broadcast this event. And I really don't want to know that I'm rolling over a particular background movie clip or one of these dots. I want to know if I'm rolling over nav1, nav2, nav3, or nav4. Okay, I don't want the children elements, the backgrounds and the dots, firing off this event. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to teach you about mouse children. All right, so for each one of those nav buttons, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, hey, look inside of the nav movie clip. That's the mother parent container of everything. And let's just tell nav1mc that its mouse children property is going to be false. 
And what that means is don't let the background and the dot fire off this event, okay? So now, when I roll over this first clip, notice that it says in the output, nav1mc. That's what I want. I want to know what navigation element I'm rolling over. When I roll over these other guys, it still says bgmc and .mc. bgmc, .mc. So for all three of those other clips, I'm going to do the same thing. And instead of typing out that code for you, we're just going to paste it. So now, check it out. There's nav4, nav3, nav2, nav1. Now the big benefit to this approach again is that I don't have to tell each individual nav item to have a rollover, rollout, and click events. I only do it once for the nav container. Okay? So now that we have the mouse children working properly, we're ready to move on to getting the rollover effects in. As there's our overview of the file setup and a little discussion about how mouse children equals false is going to help us out greatly. Uh, jump on over to part two where we're going to put in all the uh, rollover, rollout, and click goodness, and also the fact that we're going to be able to make our buttons sticky. Thanks for watching this first setup. Number two is just a few moments away. Check us out on snorkel.tv if you're watching on YouTube, or if you're watching on snorkel.tv, just uh, scroll down on the page a little bit. You'll see the second video right below this one. All right, I'll be back.